Do you ever miss the good old days when you could just walk up to somebody and be like, I challenge you to duel, good sir. Yes, that's right. It's your man Z with Our Views Will Kill You coming to you with another fresh rant. As I watched The Last Duel, a Ridley Scott movie, and here I stumble upon this and I go, I remember that this was in the theaters and I didn't go see it. It was on, now it's on streaming on HBO Max and I go, would I like to see Matt Damon in a ridiculous mullet? Why, sure. Would I like to see Ben Affleck with his hair frosted golden? Sure, why not? And then would I like to see Kylo Ren looking like a treat? Sure, why not? And some white chick who I don't know who she is. And they're in the Middle Ages dueling and some stuff. So I said, all right, I'll put this flick on. And I remember that it bombed. And I remember that Ridley Scott blamed millennials and said that millennials wouldn't go see the movie for some reason. But you know what else I remembered? I remember there was a little bit of controversy about this movie because Ben Affleck and Matt Damon wrote it. And then they had to bring in somebody else to write it too. Some chick. Now, I looked at a little bit of research on this chick. <clears throat> and she's mostly only written comedies and mostly romantic comedies. So what she's doing in a historical drama, I don't know. But here's where we start looking. The Last Duel, is, this is a true story. But here's what's fact and fiction. Now, there's going to be spoilers for this, folks. So if you don't want that, go ahead. Go check out the movie. It's streaming on HBO Max. And then come back. When you come back or before you uh, come back, please like, subscribe, as that's the only way we can grow this channel. And we could really use your help. We would greatly appreciate it if you did so. But let's get back to the, the rant at hand. So here I am watching this movie, watching some night guys get all duded up and smashing some people. And it's uh, broken down into three acts, really. The first act, which is uh, Matt Damon's story, then it's Adam Driver's story, and then it's the wife's story, as there is some difficulty discerning what's the truth around a certain incident that happened where uh, the best way I can put this is mm, Adam Driver is accused of having his way with matt damon's wife without her permission let's just say non-consensual party time so there's a and then what ends up happening is they end up uh matt damon is a knight and challenges kylo ren to a duel a lightsaber duel and um basically when she, she her life is on the line so if matt damon who's married to this chick uh, if he wins, she is let off the hook and everything is good. She gets her honor back. If Kylo Ren wins, then uh, she gets killed because she's spreading false rumors. See, back in the day when you sped, uh, spread false rumors, you would be executed. Uh, so this is actually based on a true story from... It's the last judicial duel from 1396 in medieval France. <clears throat> where if you accuse someone of something, you could duel to the death for it. So I, I was like, all right, I'll check this out. Guess what? It, 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 and it's what's interesting is, is the three acts are broken into Matt Damon's story, which his version of the truth, and then where he thinks he's a good husband and he was rightfully, or he was wronged by Adam Driver's character. Then you have Adam Driver who tells his story of the truth, which is, He's a scumbag, and but he didn't do any wrong because she wanted him. They, they were having an affair in his mind or whatever. And then there's her truth. And that's where it gets stupid. Because they go like, it goes his his account of, affair, of, of the affairs that happened. And then the other guy's affairs of what happened. Like his, his idea. And then it goes her truth. The truth. Like they leave it so you're thinking it's the truth. Well, guess what? When they wrote this thing, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon wrote the first two acts, 
which were historically accurate. And then there's her story, which is completely unhistorically accurate and makes no damn sense and ruins the entire movie for everybody. There was some in, some interesting uh, political things going on here, but they took all of the power away from the woman in order to virtue signal. So here's what's wrong with this movie. It's just, it drives me nuts when I see stuff, when people are like, we need to have, they need to virtue signal and have to say like, oh, this makes, this will be so much better if we can tell her story from the, the right angle or whatever they're trying to do. Um, these guys even said when they were looking at it, uh, they were looking at, it wasn't so much about hewing fastidiously to the historical truth because that wouldn't have served, uh, because that wouldn't have served narrative seeds we were interested in as much as illuminating the fact that the vestiges of sexism and mythogeny of the patriarchy we live in now come from a place that was Western civilization's codified value system. Yeah, you know, like that's the point is you can't go backwards and judge history. They lived like that because they had to. Um, that was the feudal system that was created. There are also queens who are pretty powerful. And here's where the story goes real off the wall. So to understand what's going on, and I'm not going to go into a great amount of detail, but um, basically, Matt Damon's character, Matt Damon, is uh, a squire, not quite yet a knight, not yet a man. And he's going out and his he's being his uh there's there's been a work shortage because of the plague he lost his wife and his kid to the plague but he's also real bad apparently at managing his lands on some level where he's not properly collecting taxes and things like that so he has to keep going off to war to pay off his debts to run his land he meets a he meets his wife and she's uh her her father's a trader but he has this plot of land that was very important to him and was her favorite plot of land it was the most valuable estate which was stolen from them in taxes so here you have motive for her to make up this story about why um she had been uh you know mishandled by Adam Driver's character, because Adam Driver's character owned this piece of land that she wanted. But instead, they take the story where they show the wife's version of the story where her husband's abusive, he's terrible, and blah, 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 and he's no good man, he's not a good man. And they end up showing how she can run the stables better, and she can collect taxes better. Except none of that makes sense, because she keeps sending her husband off to war to go pay for things. So there's this one scene in particular where she's running the books for the master of the house because he's no he's not there cuz he's going to pay off his debts and become a knight. She goes she sees there's a guy there and the guy comes up with his family and she asks him about his taxes. Has he paid taxes? And the guy goes, "No, the master never collected the taxes last time." And instead of being like, "Well, you should owe you should pay him now." The guy goes, well, I can pay them now, but, I, you know, he's got a family next to him. And the wife goes, well, you paid your taxes. It's okay. Get out of here. You sent your husband to war. What are you doing? The man said he would pay his taxes, yet you're not going to take the taxes because you're the bestest ever. You could just run things and, and make things so much better. The, the dude literally, there's a whole scene about a horse and the horse gets assaulted by another horse. I don't know what, there's like too many sexual assaults in this this movie. You know, it's a little graphic if you don't wanna, like you see some from freaking horse wang. I mean, it's crazy. So basically the man's traumatized because the horse that he had, he had a mare that was going to get him out of debt was sexually assaulted by another freaking horse, right? So the man, so Matt Damon's character goes, don't let the horse out of its pen well, it got pregnant, and the the pen the horse keeper's like, I gotta keep it in the pen, and the wife comes up and is like, you should let it be free because wouldn't that be better for the horse? Sure, whatever. Like, how about somebody guard the thing? The reason why the guy had it penned up was because it had been assaulted before because somebody let the horses out. Like, you literally get to watch the horse get assaulted. It's crazy. There's so much violence to animals in this. It's it's bonkers. I don't know. I don't understand. So anyway, back. So she's telling her story where she's the 
oh, she can handle everything. She's so great. She's a great wife, great whatever. None of this stuff is historically like accurate. They just made it all up, and they even said they made it all up in the story. And guess what? It's the poorest written part. It's the least interesting. It doesn't move the story forward at all. It just randomly does things, you know? Women of that status on the feud on these feudal estates were in charge of a lot of things, especially when their husbands were away on important business. I would call that historically accurate, even though we don't have a direct testimony that Margaret Marguerite did this at that time. Pretty they're like trying to give women a new voice. Just I don't understand. If you want to tell this historically accurate thing, just tell it. And if you're going to tell it, it's fine if you give her a little bit of a different voice. But you gave her contradicting ideals and things that didn't make sense. You want to give her a voice. Make her cunning. Make her intelligent. Make her shrewd. Make it so that she made these accusations against Adam Driver so that she could right the wrongs that were committed against her father. And she wanted that land back. She knew that land was valuable. That gives her a voice. That gives her motive. That gives her something to do. Instead, it's this convoluted story. If you don't really know what happened, they make it so morally ambiguous. Was she flirting with Adam Driver? I don't know. Did she have an affair that night with him? Like Adam Driver said, I don't know. They're going to make it too ambiguous and then spend all this time. And of course, can two women be friends? No. Her best friend betrays her, just like they always say with those social justice warriors. It's just real stupid. And there's all this extra, like, nonsensical drama that doesn't mean anything. Like, it's completely stupid. And they don't put it in there. The drama is maybe that her and her husband conspired against this dude to wrong the rights that were committed against her father. Or maybe it was her own idea. It didn't have to be anybody else's idea. So I just thought that was incredibly stupid. They took this guy's book. And then they chopped it up. And when they go like, well, it's like 75% historically accurate. Okay. You know, and then the actual accurate story is that she actually was assaulted by this dude because they were saying that they think there was uh, evidence of it where she had bruises and some other things. Like, uh, I don't understand. Like, it, it just doesn't make... They just, they totally screwed the pooch on this. And you wonder why it failed. Any word of math about this, I'd have been like, this is a good movie for the first two of the three acts, and then it turns into a bunch of junk, and then there's a fight at the end. It's worth watching, maybe. If it's free, go see it. But if you got to pay for it, I'd be like, what is this trash? And then you hear them interviewing, like puffing themselves up, like, oh, look at us. We gave uh, this woman, she brought, we brought in a woman writer so she could make this so much better. And I have nothing against a female writer. They do, you know, Brid uh, Bridget Phetasy, great comedian. Check out her podcast. I love it. Uh, they could, it. It's not like that, but you give a woman who's a, she doesn't even have the, the track record of writing stuff about this. She writes com comedic, heartfelt comedies and stuff like that. She doesn't write historical things. So then she just, they're like, oh, don't worry about the historical fact. Just make it up. Just make up whatever you want. And then you get this like act three of convoluted mess that makes no sense. And then of course this woman's got to depict, you know, three or two or three different scenes of, uh, of her being assaulted for no reason. Like, yeah. I, I liked the, the conceit of how it was put together with the people's different stories. And you could have kept her version of it. Would have been fine. But it would have been more interesting if you made it where she actually had some sort of like stake in this or some sort of motive instead of just moping around, whining about her husband being a jerk and then the whole patriarchy turning on her and the priest turning on her and everybody turns on her because she's a woman. and But she could still run everything better than everybody else. It's hollow, shallow, useless, pointless. Do better. I didn't like that. So blame me. If you, if you liked it, I, I could see why you liked it, because I liked a lot of it. But then, to me, the third act just falls apart. And then when you do the research and you look it up and you actually read these articles where they're like, yeah, this guy spent all this time writing this book. And then he goes, well, you know, you, you, you didn't really get it, but it's okay. You got like 75% of it. But then you look at it and they go back and, and, and they said they changed it because they wanted to, because they wanted to send a message. They had an agenda. Instead of telling a historically, don't, wh why use the guy's book then? Just throw it out and write your own story. Don't use it. Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, 
Matt Damon. Stop virtue signaling. Look what happened to Matt Damon. Virtue signaling all the time. And then he gets in trouble for uh, saying some bad words. His, his daughter ratted him out for it. Good luck with that, bro. Good luck with that, bro. Anyway, if you like what I do here, uh, like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, we do live stream 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday nights. Come join us for the party. It's not always this angry. I <laughs> uh, promise you, we have a much better time there. It's, it's a big time party. And uh, be sure to check out our uh, full-length full audio podcast on Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes. It's been on iTunes forever. Check it out. We're like 300 episodes in. You're missing out on the fun. So anyway, that's all there is from me. I'm your man Z, and I'll catch you on the next one.